Welcome to my podcast series about mysteries, strange and eerie disappearances, unsolved cases. My name is John Plus, and I'll be trying to cover mystery and unsolved cases from the past and present. You can find me on Instagram, I'm John Plus Actor, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. You can download my podcast on Podbean, and it'll be distributed on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all podcast platforms. I hope you love listeners will enjoy these podcasts. In today's podcast, I'll be discussing a very strange and unsettling death that happened in 2013. This is the case of Elisa Lam. Elisa Lam was born on April 30th, 1991 in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. She was the daughter of immigrants from Hong Kong, and she was a student at the University of British Columbia, although she was not registered at the beginning of 2013. In mid-2010, Lam began a blog named Etherfields on Blogspot. Over the next two years, she posted pictures of models in fashionable clothing and accounts of her life, particularly her struggle with mental illness. In a January 2012 blog post, Lam lamented that a relapse at the start of the current school term had forced her to stop, drop several classes, leaving her feeling so utterly directionless and lost. She titled her post, You're always haunted by the idea you're wasting your life, after a quotation from novelist Chuck Palahniuk. She used that quote as an epigraph for her blog. A little over two years after Lam had started blogging, she announced she would be abandoning her blog for another she had started on Tumblr, Nouvel Nouveau. Its content mostly consisted of fashion photos, quotes, and a few posts on Lam's own words. The same Palahnia quotation was used as an epigraph. Lam had been diagnosed with a bipolar disorder and depression. She had been prescribed several medications for her mental health issues. Wolbutrin, Lamotrigin, Quetiapin, Dexedrine, Spansul, and Venlafaxin. According to her family, who reportedly kept her mental illness private, Lam had no history of suicidal ideations or attempts although one report claimed she had previously gone missing for a brief period. Lam had a history of not taking her bipolar medications, and as a result, on several occasions suffered hallucinations that would cause her to hide under her bed for refuge. She was hospitalized at least once for one of these episodes. For her trip to California, Lam traveled alone on Amtrak and intercity buses. She visited the San Diego Zoo and posted photos taken there on social media. On January 26, she arrived in Los Angeles. After two days, she checked into the Cecil Hotel near downtown's Skid Row. Lam was initially assigned a shared room on the hotel's fifth floor. However, her roommates complained about what the lawyers hotel's lawyer would later describe a certain odd behavior, and Lam was moved to a room of her own after two days. According to Amy Price, the manager of the Cecil Hotel and stay on Main at the time of Lam's disappearance, Lam was leaving notes for her roommates that said, go home and go away, and would lock the door to the room and require a password for entry. A few days before her disappearance, Lam attended a live taping of Conan in Burbank, but was escorted off the premises by security due to disruptive behavior. Lam contacted her parents in British Columbia daily while traveling up until the day she disappeared. On January 31, 2013, the day she was scheduled to check out of the Cecil Hotel and leave for Santa Cruz, her parents did not hear from her and called the Los Angeles Police Department. Her family flew to Los Angeles to help with the search. Hotel staff who saw Lam that day said she was alone. 
Outside the hotel, Katie Orphan, manager of the last bookstore, was the only person who recalled seeing her that day. Police searched the hotel to the extent that legally could. They searched Lamp's room and had dogs go through the building, including the rooftop, but the dogs were unsuccessful in detecting her scent. On February 6, a week late, later, after Lam had been last seen, the LAPD decided more help was needed. Flyers with her image were posted in the neighborhood and online. It brought the case to the public's attention through the media. On February 13, after another week with no sign of Lam, the LAPD released a video of the last known sighting of her, taken in one of the Cecil's elevators by video surveillance camera on January 31st. In approximately two and a half minutes of footage, Lam, alone, makes unusual moves and gestures. She appears to press every button on the elevator panel, peers into the hallway, then leaves the elevator at one point while its doors remain open. When the doors fail to close after she returns, she leaves. The doors close later. The video drew worldwide interest in the case due to Lam's strange behavior and has been extensively analyzed and discussed. It was reposted widely, including on the Chinese video sharing site Yuku, where it got 3 million views and 40,000 comments in its first 10 days. Many of the commentators found it unsettling to watch. Several theories emerged to explain her actions. One was that Lam was trying to get the elevator car to move in order to escape from someone who was pursuing her. Others suggested that she might be under the influence of ecstasy or some other party drug, but none was detected in her body. When her bipolar disorder became known, the theories that she was having a psychotic episode also emerged. Other viewers argued that the video had been tampered with before being made public. Besides the obscuring of the timestamp, they claimed parts had been slowed down and nearly a minute of footage had been removed. This could have been done to protect the identity of someone who otherwise would be in the video, either related or not to the disappearance. On February 19, 2013, her body was recovered from a large cistern atop the stay on main hotel in downtown Los Angeles, where she had been a guest. She was last seen alive on January 31st and was reported missing by her, pa her parents on February the 1st. Her body was discovered by a hotel maintenance worker investigating complaints of flooding and low water pressure. During the search for Lam, guests at the hotel began complaining about low water pressure. Some later claimed their water was colored black and had an unusual taste. On the morning of February 19, Santiago Lopez, a hotel maintenance worker, found Lam's body in one of four thousand gallon tanks located on the, on the roof, providing water to guest rooms, a kitchen and a coffee shop. Through the open hatch he saw Lam lying face up in the water. The tank was drained and cut open since his maintenance hatch was too small to accommodate equipment needed to remove Lam's body. ...of a Canadian woman uh, adds to the mystery around her death. This, take a look, is 21-year-old Elisa Lam riding an elevator at the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles. So she peers out the doors, runs back in, and then presses several buttons. Strange behavior. But what happened afterward is even more bizarre. Several weeks after she was last seen, Los Angeles fire crews pulled Lam's body from the hotel's water tank on the roof. So let's turn now to CNN's Ken Law in front of the Cecil Hotel right now. A uh, very gruesome find, very perplexing mystery here. What more do we know about this case? Well, let's start with the actual murder case, uh, the actual case itself. I can't call it murder because what the LAPD is saying is they're treating this as a suspicious death. They are not calling it a homicide. What they will tell us is that Lam, a resident of Vancouver, Canada, came down here as a tourist. She arrived in Los Angeles on January 26th, well, on January 31st, 
she went missing. She was last seen here at the Cecil Hotel. You've seen that surveillance video. You've seen pictures that the LAPD has sent out of her. Then yesterday, the maintenance worker responding to some concerns about some water problems at the hotel went and checked the rooftop's water tanks. There are four of them. When he looked in one of them, that's when he made the gruesome discovery. The fire department investigators have been here. They did identify her through body markings. At this point, the autopsy is still being conducted. Frederica is still waiting for that. And so what, are, you know, what kind of role do the hotel guests play in all of this? Apparently, they were very concerned about the water pressure. And, and you know, then once they learned why, did the hotel guests know about this? How were they enlightened, so to speak? Well, some of them learned by watching the local news. You may notice that the front doors of this hotel are open. The hotel has not closed. It has stayed open. It is on a flush order, meaning that, re that all the people who are here, they can only use it to flush the toilets. No showering, no washing your hands, no definitely no drinking of the water. So we've spoken to some residents here who say that the hotel has not been honest with them, not been forthcoming. Mm. And here's what one couple from the U.K. told us. The water did have funny taste. It wasn't right. It, it, there was something wrong. The, the pressure in the water was terrible. The shower was awful. The water, and when you turned the tap on, the water was coming black first for two seconds, and then it was going back to normal. But in UK, we drink water from tap, and it has completely proper, nice taste. Uh, but the water here, but we, but we, we never thought anything of it. We thought it pollution. We thought it's just, it's just the way it is here. The hotel is having them sign waivers saying, yeah, you can stay here at the hotel, but it's mm. not our fault if anything happens to you. We do. On February 21st, the Los Angeles coroner's office issued the finding of accidental drowning with a bipolar disorder as a significant factor. The full coroner's report, released in June, stated that Lam's body had been found naked. Clothing similar to what she was wearing in the elevator video was floating in the water, coated with a sand-like particulate. Her watch and room key were also found with her. Lam's body was moderately decomposed and bloated. It was mostly greenish, with some marbling evident on the abdomen and skin separation evident. There was no evidence of physical trauma, assault or suicide. Toxicology tests showed traces consistent with prescription medication found among her belongings, plus non-prescription drugs such as Zinutab and ibuprofen. A very small quantity of alcohol was present, but no other recreational drugs. Investigators and experts have however noted that the concentration of her prescription drugs in her system indicate that she was under medicating or had stopped taking her medications recently. The investigation had determined how Lam died, but did not initially offer an explanation as to how she got into the tank in the first place. Doors and stairs that access the hotel's roof are locked, with only staff having the passcodes and keys, and any attempt to force them would supposedly have triggered an alarm. The hotel's fire escape could have allowed her to bypass the security measures. Her scent trail was lost near a window that connect connected to it. A video posted to the internet after Lam's death showed that the hotel's roof was easily accessible via the fire escape, and that two of the lids of the water tanks was, were open. Apart from the question of how she got on the roof, others asked if she could have gotten into the tank by herself. All four tanks were 4x8 foot cylinders, propped, on, propped up on concrete blocks. There was no fixed access to them, and hotel workers had to use a ladder to look at the water. They were protected by heavy lids that could be difficult to replace from within. The hotel employee who found the body said that the lid was open at the time. Removing the issue of how she got could have, could have closed the lid from inside. Police dogs that searched through the hotel for Lam, even on the roof, shortly after her disappearance was noted, did not find any trace of her. Proponents of the theory that the elevator video shows she was under the influence of illicit drugs are not dissuaded by their absence from the toxicology report in her organism. 
suggesting that they might have broken down during the period of time her body decomposed in the tank or that she might have taken rare cocktails of such drugs that the normal screen would not detect. The very low level of her prescription drugs in her system and the number of pills left in her prescription bottle suggested she might be she was under medicating or had recently stopped taking her medication for bipolar disorder, which might have led to, to that psychotic episode. Hell resident Alvin Taylor helped us videotape it with a cell phone. Yes, no chlorine. Chlorine. What the city is using to flush the hotel's entire water system after the gruesome discovery of a woman's body inside one of the rooftop tanks that may have been there for as long as two and a half weeks. Four tanks connect to the hotel's drinking supply. And during those weeks, hundreds of residents and hotel guests have been using it. Really clenched my stomach. That's why a lot of people have left and went to another hotel. Just the thought of it for so long. The woman inside the tank, 21-year-old Elisa Lam. The tourist from Vancouver, Canada, arrived in Los Angeles on January 26th. Surveillance video shows her acting oddly inside the hotel elevator as if she's hiding from someone. But Katie Orphan says Lamb didn't seem odd at all when they met. She was very outgoing, very lively, very friendly. Orphan is the manager of a bookstore around the corner from the hotel called The Last Bookstore. One of the last places Lamb was seen by anyone as she bought records and presents for her parents and sister. Talking about what book she was getting and whether or not uh, what she was getting would be too heavy for her to carry around as she traveled or take home with her. That was January 31st. The young woman planned to see more of California State Police. Her parents flew down to Los Angeles to plead for the city to help find their daughter. Outside the family's restaurant near Vancouver, a memorial for a young life lost too soon in an unforgettable manner. It kind of feels like the beginning of a noir novel, like this is the beginning of a Raymond Chandler story and Philip Marlowe is going to figure out what happened. And unfortunately, this is real life. Kyung, I mean, this story is just, the story is awful. The testing of the hotel water is complete. What do the tests show? Well, we spoke to the L.A. Department of Public Health, and they said that they look for two specific types of bacteria, and the tests came back negative. Now, you may be... The autopsy report and its conclusions were also questions based, based on the incomplete information. For instance, it does not say what the results of the rape kit and fingernail kit were, or even if they were processed. The coroner's pathologists were ambivalent about their conclusion that Lam's death was accidental. After her death, her Tumblr blog was updated, presumably through Tumblr's Q option that allows posts to automatically publish themselves when the user is away. Her phone was not found either with her body or in her hotel room. Whether the continued updates to her blog were facilitated by the theft of her phone the work of a hacker or through the queue is not known, nor is it known whether the updates are related to her death. The circumstances of Lam's death have been compared to the plot elements of the 2005 horror film Dark Water. In that film, an American remake of an earlier Japanese film of the same name based on a 1996 short story by Koji Suzuki, a mother and daughter move into a run-down apartment building. A dysfunctional elevator and discolored water gushing from the building's faucets eventually lead them to the building's rooftop water tank, where they discover the body of a girl who had been reported missing from the building a year earlier. There's a leak in my bedroom ceiling, and I can hear that there's someone running water upstairs. Did you say upstairs? There hasn't been anyone up there for years. So it went into the elevator and the buttons are burnt off. Why was the door open? It was locked. Someone else opened it. A 
A CNN article states, Two days after the grisly discovery, the case of the Los Angeles Hotel water tank corpse is a mystery with many unanswered questions. The decomposing body of Alyssa Lam floated inside the water tank on the roof of the Cecil Hotel while guests brushed their teeth, bathed and drank with water from it for as long as 19 days. A maintenance worker, checking on complaints about the waters of the hotel, the, waters, the water, found the 21-year-old Canadian tourist inside one of four hotel cisterns Tuesday morning, Los Angeles Police Sergeant Rudy Lopez said. Los Angeles robbery homicide detectives are treating this as a suspicious death for obvious reasons, Lopez said. Falling into a covered water tank behind a locked door on top of a roof would be an unusual accident. An autopsy was completed, but the cause of death is deferred pending further investigation, Assistant Chief Coroner Ed Winter said on Thursday. That may take six to eight weeks. Any marks, injuries or wounds may suggest Lamb died elsewhere and was dumped into the tank by her killer. Water in Lamb's lungs could be a sign that she drowned, but it might not tell why she was inside the small tank. One clue comes from security camera video of Lamb inside the hotel elevator the last day she was seen. She is seen walking into the elevator, pushing the buttons for four floors, and then peering out of the opened elevator door, as if she is hiding or booking or looking for someone. Clad in a red hoodie, Lam at one point walks out of the elevator before returning to it, pushing the buttons again. She then stands outside the open elevator doorway, motioning with her hands, before apparently walking away. Lam checked in, into the Cecil Hotel five days earlier, January 26, on her way to, to Santa Cruz, California, according to police in her hometown of Vancouver, British Columbia. Because it was an international case, and her parents and sister flew to California to find answers, the case may have gotten more attention than most of the several thousand missing person reports made in Los Angeles each year. A search of the hotel then found no sign of Lam, including a trip to the roof with a police search dog, Lopez said. Strange things began happening with the hotel's water supply later in the month, according to Sabia and uh, Michael Bow, a British couple who spent eight days there until checking out Wednesday. The water pressure dropped to trickle at times. Eventually, the hotel maintenance department investigated the water problem, sending a water a worker to look into the tank, police said. He saw Lam's lifeless body at the bottom. Of course, there is massive, massive speculation and many theories, sub-theories, trying to explain Elisa Lam's disappearance and to solve the mystery. One Reddit user notes that bipolar medication don't always work the way they're marketed. Depending on who the doctor was, he might not have even, even prescribed the right medication. People say she was off her meds when this happened, but her medication might not have even been working for her all that great. It seems very likely that she was suffering from psychosis related to her long-standing mental illness and managed to get into the roof, possibly jump, and climbed onto the tank, was unable to get out, and drowned. Auditory hallucin hallucinations are more common than we realize, and happen to people without any mental illness. In the days and weeks leading up to the incident, she was clearly in a downward spiral, had stopped taking her medication, and was exhibiting many psychotic symptoms. And eventually, it was revealed that on the night she drowned, the door leading to the roof has been, was left unlocked, and the cover of the water tank had been left open due to renovations. So while we cannot be 100% sure, it was very likely a tragic accident. Famous, and those who would be famous, the Cecil Hotel is best known for its infamy. Founded in the 1920s, the hotel sits in downtown Los Angeles, just a stone's throw from Skid Row. The neighborhood around the Cecil has changed over the decades, but despite the city's best efforts to gentrify it, the hotel remains a symbol 
of the area's dark past. Thank you for calling the European-style Cecil Hotel, the best affordable hotel in downtown Los Angeles. Calling itself the premier choice of affordable downtown Los Angeles hotels, the Cecil attracts mostly low-income residents. In the 50s and 60s, it was known as a place where those at the end of their rope would end their life. In 1985, it was the choice hideout for serial killer Richard Ramirez, convicted of killing at least 13 people throughout Los Angeles. Ramirez reportedly lived at the hotel for months. An Austrian serial killer also found comfort at the Cecil. Jack Underweger may have even killed some of his prostitute victims there. It's even rumored that the actress known as Black Dahlia hung out in the hotel before her brutal murder in 1947. And now this, the decomposing body of a Canadian tourist found in one of the hotel's water tanks. Guests here were noticeably upset. Wouldn't you be if, if there was a dead body in the water you were using and drinking? Canadian tourist Elisa Lamb chose the hotel despite its seedy past. Her body may have been there for weeks. The pressure in the water was terrible. The shower was awful. The water, and when you turned the tap on, the water was coming black first. Between One of the more outlandish theories is that Lam was playing the chilling ritual known as the elevator game, which would explain her odd and dist disturbing behavior. This rather disturbing game sees the player visit a number of different floors in an elevator, in a bid to get to a new dimension. The rules state that the player must first enter the elevator alone, but things change later on when someone joins them. From the first floor, they must then descend to the second floor, up to the sixth, down to the second again, up to the tenth, and finally down to the fifth. And it is virtually uh, vitally important they do not get out of the elevator on any floor. After reaching the fifth level, the legend says a mysterious woman will enter the lift, but the person playing must not look or interact with her at all. Then players must push the button to the first floor again, where two things are said to happen there. If the lift goes down, the player must leave the building and not look back, ever. One red theory links Slam to the tuberculosis outbreak in Los Angeles that popped up in 2013, right around the time of her death. Online detectives suggest that she was a test subject for a new type of tuberculosis medication who was experiencing adverse side effects. Others assume that Lam could have been a human biological weapon, sent to LA to spread the disease, while some wonder if she was silenced for knowing too much about the outbreak of the disease. While plenty of Reddit users and theories insist there is a connection between Lam and the fatal disease, her official autopsy suggests otherwise. At the time of her death, Lam did not have tuberculosis. Her autopsy determined that she died of accidental drowning. While it seems like it could be just another internet theory, there really is a tuberculosis test that bears an uncanny resemblance to Lam's name. The Lam ELISA test, which stands for Liporabinone Manon Enzyme Linked Immunosorbent Assay, is used to detect the disease. What do you believe happened to Elisa Lam? Let me know what's your view on the topic. This was the second episode of the Jump Plus Mystery Podcasts. Please like, share and follow my channel. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. You can download my podcast on, Pod on Podbean and it will be distributed on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts and all podcast platforms. I hope you lovely listeners will enjoy these podcasts. Please remember to send the podcast link to your friends if you like it. Bye!